Sego Mini. All frogs begin life inside an egg. A tadpole hatches from the egg. It lives in water and uses gills to breathe. The tadpole grows legs and lungs. Now it's called a froglet. It can breathe air. The fully grown adult frog no longer has a tail. The female frog lays eggs. A male frog fertilizes the eggs. The pond race. Hans, Doug, and Finns are going to have a pond race. Darla wants to join. Everyone laughs. She is too small to race. Darla feels unimpressed. Darla feels determined. Darla feels pumped. Ready, set, go! Darla starts off in fourth place. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a wooden spoon. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a branch. Doug is winning, so he thinks he has time to chew on a hockey stick. Now Darla's in third place. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy rock. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy turtle. Hans pulls ahead, but stops to rest on a comfy lily pad. Now Darla's in second place. Finns takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy poses. Finns takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy belly flops. Finns takes the lead, but decides he has time to do some fancy flips. There's the finish line. Darla finishes first. Slow and steady wins the race. Baby ducks are called ducklings. They love to swim in the water. A rainbow begins with a raindrop forming in a storm cloud. Many raindrops form and fall to the earth. Sometimes lightning strikes and thunder roars. The storm cloud moves away and the rain slows. Tiny water droplets float in the sky. At first, they are hard to see. When sunlight shines through each water droplet, Colors become visible. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet light can be seen. A rainbow is a colorful arch made by water droplets in the sunlight. Astrid the Rainbow Catcher! Astrid loves rainbows. She dreams of having her very own. She tries to catch a rainbow with a rope. She tries to catch a rainbow with a jar. She tries to catch a rainbow with a vacuum. That didn't work. She tries reaching for one with a balloon. She tries reaching for one with a stool. She tries reaching for one with a giraffe. That didn't work. She tries using a net. She tries using a fishing rod. 
She tries using a robot arm. That didn't work either. Surprise! A rainbow hug! Astrid loves rainbow. And rainbow loves Astrid. If it's both sunny and rainy, keep your eyes open for a rainbow. All honeybees start as a tiny egg in a beehive cell. When an egg hatches, the larva comes out. The larva grows. The larva will eat nectar and pollen that worker bees collect. The larva becomes a pupa. Worker bees cover the cell with wax. The bee comes out of the pupa and eats through its cell's wax. Bees swarm together and follow their queen to start a new hive. Forest Homes I wonder where the forest animals live. On a hike in the forest, Misu spots a home in a tree. It must belong to a squirrel. It must belong to an owl. It must belong to a bee. Look, someone made a home in a log. I bet it belongs to a bobcat. I bet it belongs to a skunk. I bet it belongs to a coyote. Do you think an animal lives in this pond? It's a nice home for a frog. It's a nice home for a beaver. It's a nice home for a turtle. It's a nice home for a carp. Could an animal live in this cave? A cave is a great home for a bear. A cave is a great home for a fox. A cave is a great home for a spider. A cave is a great home for a bat. Miso finds a home in the ground. This burrow belongs to a chipmunk. This burrow belongs to a marmot. This burrow belongs to a rabbit. This burrow belongs to a prairie dog. Wow, animals live everywhere in the forest. People can plant trees to make more forests. Sometimes we can't see the moon because it's completely in shadow. That's called a new moon. When the sun lights up one side, we call this a waxing crescent. When the sun lights up half of the moon, it's called the first quarter. The waxing gibbous is when the sun lights up most of the moon. Yay! Now the whole moon is lit up by the sun. This is called a full moon. Uh-oh, there's a little shadow peeking in. It's a waning gibbous now. The shadow now covers half the moon, which is called the last quarter. When the shadow covers most of the moon, it's called a waning crescent. Coral Reef Cleanup Fins has invited some friends to visit. He lives in the ocean in a sunken ship. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big yacht. Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big hovercraft.
Captain Ginger offers to bring everyone there in her big sailboat. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a giant clam. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a school of fish. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a seahorse. Rosie is looking forward to seeing a stingray. Kiki says she'll bring lots of swim noodles to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of snacks to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of ice pops to share. Kiki says she'll bring lots of towels to share. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of Helameda seaweed. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sunken treasure. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of sea stars. Harvey plans to use his underwater camera to take pictures of colorful fish. The friends head to the sunken ship. On the way, they see jumping dolphins. On the way, they see a big cargo ship. On the way, they see sea lions on a buoy. On the way, they see a flying pelican. When they arrive, they slip on snorkel gear and jump in the water. When they arrive, they put on swim fins and jump in the water. When they arrive, they lower the anchor and jump in the water. When they arrive, they set up a diving flag and jump in the water. Fins gives them a tour. Wow! An amazing coral reef has formed around the sunken ship. The coral looks like beautiful flowers, but they are actually living animals. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a water bottle. But when the friends begin to explore, they find an old tire. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a plastic bag. But when the friends begin to explore, they find a plastic spoon. The beautiful reef has trash on it. The friends decide to clean it up. They are careful not to touch the fragile living coral. They use a mesh bag to remove the garbage they collect. Now the reef is clean again. It's the perfect home for an octopus. It's the perfect home for a sea turtle. It's the perfect home for a lionfish. It's the perfect home for a clownfish. Finns thanks his friends for their help and waves goodbye. When the friends get home, they promise to help keep the ocean clean. Picking up trash helps keep ponds clean. All moths begin life inside an egg. A tiny larva emerges. It is called a caterpillar. The caterpillar eats lots of leaves and grows bigger. Now the caterpillar makes a cocoon around itself. Inside the cocoon, the caterpillar is now called a pupa. The pupa undergoes metamorphosis, a big change. The pupa has become a moth and comes out of the cocoon. The adult moth finds a mate and lays eggs. Butterfly trip. Acorn and Miso wonder where monarch butterflies go in the winter. Let's follow them to find out. Miso makes sure to pack binoculars. Miso makes sure to pack a map. Miso makes sure to pack a teddy bear. They start following the monarchs in Canada. 
Look, there are butterflies stopping for a snack. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from a milkweed flower. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from an aster flower. This butterfly is using her proboscis to eat nectar from a black-eyed Susan. Miso and Acorn eat a snack too. Then the butterflies fly away, so they hurry to follow them. The monarchs get tired and stop to sleep everywhere. The monarchs get tired and stop to sleep on branches. The monarchs get tired and stop to sleep on a tree trunk. Miso and Acorn are sleepy too. They need rest to keep up with the busy butterflies. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs on a dog. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs on a beach. In the morning, Miso and Acorn find monarchs in a park. Finally, Miso and Acorn arrive in Mexico. There are butterflies everywhere. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies drinking water. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies flying in the trees. Acorn takes a picture of the butterflies flying over the mountains. It's warm outside and Miso is hot. She wonders, maybe the monarchs migrate to Mexico in the winter to stay warm? It's time for Miso and Acorn to go home, but they'll come back in the spring. That's when monarchs lay their eggs. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a new butterfly. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a butterfly egg. When they come back, Acorn hopes they'll see a chrysalis. A butterfly is an insect with six legs and two pairs of large wings. Miso makes compost. Why is Miso saving all the stinky garbage? Because she's making a big compost pile in her yard. Miso can put leftover fruit in the compost pile. She is going to add banana peels. She is going to add apple cores. She is going to add watermelon rinds. She can also add paper to the pile. Miso collects some paper towels. Miso collects some packing paper. Miso collects some napkins. Can Miso add some vegetable scraps? Yes, she piles up some moldy cucumbers. She piles up some potato peels. She piles up some salad leftovers. Miso knows she should not put metal or plastic in her compost pile. So, instead, she will recycle her containers. So, instead, she will recycle her bags. So, instead, she will recycle her bottles. Miso waits six long weeks for her compost pile to decompose. <coughs> Meanwhile, Miso's worm friends help turn the scraps into compost. Finally, Miso's compost is finished. She can use the compost to feed her tomatoes. She can use the compost to feed her pumpkins. She can use the compost to feed her peas. Wow, look how those peas grew! Miso is a happy gardener. <laughs>